Okay, this is the twelfth and final video in this series dedicated to Bessie Shuffle Diagrams. And so here I thought we would review for the last time some definitions. A shuffle S is said to be a Bessie Shuffle if and only if S preserves or inverts Bessie sequences. Recall the Bessie sequences of order 8 are 10010110 and its inversion 01101001. Also recall that we have a color coding scheme for the position values. Position values 1, 4, 6, 7 are color coded black and position values 2, 3, 5, 8 are color-coded red. This will enable us to detect whether the Bessie sequence has been preserved, as in the case here, or inverted, as in the case here. Recall, an inversion occurs if the cards that originally began in positions 1, 4, 6, and 7 get moved to positions 2, 3, 5, 8, and vice versa. Also, recall that the two Bessie sequences of order 8 can be characterized as follows. The top one here has the property that the 1s are in positions 1, 4, 6, 7, and the zeros are in positions 2, 3, 5, 8. The inversion of this sequence is found below and the relationship between the zeros and ones switch places. The first shuffle for today is shuffle 45 and it is a repeat LR shuffle. To derive the permutation representation for this shuffle, we begin with our ordered packet 1 through 8 and we perform the shuffle. The shuffle is performed as follows. It's an LR shuffle, so left, right, left, right. And then we perform that same set of actions to each half. So we'll do left, right, left, right for that half. And then left, right, left, right for that half. And now the stacking here is as follows. We're going to stack, now remember this is pile one, two, three, four. So pile 4 will be stacked on top of pile 2, pile 3 will be stacked on top of pile 1, and then the right pile will be stacked on top of the left-hand pile. Okay, and we also call this a leapfrog stacking. So 4 leaps over 3 and lands on 2, pile 3 leaps over 2 and lands on 1, and then from here we're stacking the right pile on top of the left. So what is the new ordering that we obtain from that shuffle? Well, it's right here. 26154837. So the Cauchy two-line notation for this permutation is as follows. The top row is always 1 through 8. The second row is 26154837. Converting this to cycle notation, we obtain the following. 1 goes to 2, so we have an arrow from 1 to 2. 2 goes to 6, so there's an arrow from 2 to 6. 6 goes to 8, an arrow from 6 to 8. 8 goes to 7, an arrow from 8 to 7. 7 goes to 3, an arrow from 7 to 3. And finally, 3 gets sent back to 1. So it cycles around, giving us a 6 cycle. The remaining values are as follows. 4 goes to 5, so we have an arrow from 4 to 5, and then 5 gets sent back to 4, so that completes a 2 cycle, also called a transposition. Color coding our digits, we obtain the following. Recall position values 1, 4, 6, 7 are color coded black, and position values 2, 3, 5, 8 are color coded red. This gives us the following. Black 1 gets sent to red 2, which is sent to black 6, 
which is sent to red 8, which is sent to black 7, which is sent to red 3, which wraps around and gets sent to black 1. Black 4 goes to red 5, which goes back to black 4. So we see that the following has occurred. Each value gets sent to a value of the opposite color. And when that happens, we say that inversion has occurred. And this simply means that everything that began originally in positions 1, 4, 6, 7 get moved to positions 2, 3, 5, 8 in some assignment and vice versa. So inversion has occurred. We can illustrate inversion by using our Bessie sequence 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0. So it should be the case that after we perform this shuffle, we should get the inversion of that Bessie sequence. So let's go ahead and perform the shuffle. It's the repeat LR. So you go left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Perform those same actions for each half. Left, right, left, right. Left, right, left, right. Now we're going to stack the fourth pile on top of the second, the third pile on top of the first, and then we're going to stack the right pile on top of the left. And so we now should have the Bessie sequence 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, which we do. Taking a look at the shuffle diagram, the top row on the left, we see that the following diagram represents this permutation. We see the six cycle, one, two, six, eight, seven, three. So it should be the case that if we begin at one, there should be an arrow from one to two, which there is, from two down to six, there's an arrow, and there should be an arrow from six up to eight, and an arrow from eight to seven, and an arrow from 7 to 3, and then we should have an arrow from 3 back up to 1, and we do. And that completes this 6 cycle. We also say that these 6 values constitute an orbit. For values 4 and 5, since they constitute a transposition, we would expect to see a double arrow between those two values, and we do. Those two values constitute their own, smaller, orbit. Shuffle 46 is next. It is also a repeat LR. So to derive the permutation representation of this shuffle, we begin with our ordered packet 1 through 8 and we perform the shuffle. So since this is a repeat LR, we begin the same way as we would for any repeat LR. We simply deal the cards into a left and right pile. Now we pick up each half and deal those into a left and right pile. Okay, so this is called a repeat LR. Now the stacking is as follows. Uh, this is, of course, pile one, two, three, four. So the stacking is pile four goes on top of pile two, pile three goes on top of pile one, and then we'll stack the left pile on top of the right. So let's go ahead and do that. So pile four leaps over pile three and gets stacked on top of pile two. Pile three leaps over pile two and gets stacked on top of pile one. And then the left pile is stacked on top of the right pile. So what is the new ordering of the cards after that shuffle has been completed? Well, it's as follows. 4837615. Cauchy's two-line notation for this permutation is as follows. The top row is always 1 through 8 for what we are doing. And the bottom row is 4, 8, 3, 7, 2, 6, 1, 5. Converting this to cycle notation, we obtain the following. 1 goes to 4, so there's an arrow from 1 to 4. 4 goes to 7, so there's an arrow from 4 to 7. 7 gets sent back to 1. So that completes this three cycle here. 
What about two? What happens to two? Two gets sent to eight. So we have an arrow from two to eight. Eight goes to five. So we have an arrow from eight to five. And five gets sent back to two, which completes that three cycle. And then we see that we have a fixed point at three. Three gets sent to three. So that means whatever begins in position three will end up in position three after the shuffle is complete. And also six is a fixed point. Six gets sent to six. So whatever begins in position six will be returned to position six. Color coding our digits, we obtain the following. Recall that the color coding of our digits is as follows. Position values one, four, six, seven are color coded black. Position values two, three, five, eight are color coded red. This enables us to see what is happening with the fundamental structure of the sequence, since we are focusing on Bessie sequences here. And there are two possibilities. The Bessie sequence will be preserved in its current form, or it will be inverted. And inversion just means whatever cards began in positions one, four, six, seven, get moved to positions two, three, five, eight, once the shuffle is complete, and vice versa. The cards originally in positions two, three, five, eight get moved somewhere to, to positions one, four, six, seven. So we see here that black one goes to black four, which goes to black seven, which wraps around to black one. Red two goes to red eight, which goes to red five, which wraps around to red two. Red three goes to itself. Black six goes to itself. So we can see that each value gets sent to a value of the same color. And so here we would say inversion does not occur. The Bessie sequence form will be preserved. And we can see that by using a Bessie sequence to demonstrate this. So let's begin with the Bessie sequence 1001110 and perform this shuffle. So this is a repeat LR. So you just do left, right, left, right. And then you perform that same set of actions on each half. And then we're stacking the fourth pile on top of the second. So it leaps over the third pile. The third pile gets stacked on top of the first. So it leaps over the second. And then finally, the left pile gets stacked on top of the right. So it should be the case that we still have one, zero, zero, one, zero, one, one, zero. And we do. Now this doesn't mean that the cards have not moved around because they have moved around, right? As we can see here, all of them have moved to new locations except for two of them. So we have cards in positions one, four, and seven. One, four, and seven. They're moving around among themselves. Similarly, for cards in position two, five, and eight, they're moving around among themselves according to these assignments here. Now, the card in position three, this one right here, which happens to be a zero, that will be returned to its original location once the shuffle is complete. The same thing is true for the card in position six, which is right here, that one. After all of that mixing is done, that precise card will be returned to where it started, namely position six. Taking a look at the shuffle diagram for shuffle 46, we see the following is true. We have our two fixed points, three and six, so they don't go anywhere. And then we have our first three cycle. It's one, four, seven. So if we start at one, we should expect an arrow from one to four, which we have an arrow from four up to seven. It's right there. And then we should have an arrow from seven to one. And that completes that three cycle. And we say that those three values, one, four, seven, constitute an orbit because they just cycle around among themselves. 
The second three cycle is 285. So if we begin at 2, we should expect to find an arrow from 2 to 8, which we do. An arrow from 8 down to 5, and then an arrow from 5 back up to 2. And that completes our second three cycle. And those three values, 258, constitute their own orbit. And I should point out that 3 constitutes its own orbit. It's a singleton set, and 6 does as well since they are just assigned to themselves. They don't go anywhere. Now there is a note down here that shuffle 46 is the inverse of shuffle 1. Shuffle 1 is from the very beginning of this series. So let's remind you of shuffle 1. This is simply the LR shuffle on which we stack the left pile on top of the right. So this shuffle here is actually the inverse of shuffle 46. They will undo each other. And if you look at the actions for each of these shuffles, it is not at all clear that they should undo the effects of the other. So why don't we go ahead and just demonstrate that they are indeed inverses. At least we'll demonstrate one direction. So because shuffle 1 and shuffle 46 are inverses, if we perform them in either order, it should return this packet to its original order. So why don't we go ahead, we'll perform shuffle 1 first. So this is just an ordinary left-right shuffle on which we're stacking the left pile on top of the right. And we can even see the um, new ordering of the cards. It's a bit of a mess. Now apparently shuffle 46 is going to undo this mess and give us 1 through 8 back. Okay, So shuffle 46 once again is the one that we just did a moment ago. This is a repeat LR. So you do a left right. And now you perform the left right shuffle on each half. Like that. And like this. And then the stacking for shuffle 46 is as follows. We stack the fourth pile on top of the second, the third pile on top of the first, and then we stack the left pile on top of the right. So apparently we should get back to the exact original ordering of cards, and we do. And it will also be the case if you perform shuffle 46 first, followed by shuffle 1, you'll get the same outcome. So those are truly inverses of one another. Now we can see their inverses by just looking at their shuffle diagrams. Because their shuffle diagrams are identical except for the fact that the arrows are reversed. So for example, for shuffle 1, there's an arrow from 1 to 7. For shuffle 46, there is an arrow from 7 to 1. So it's just the opposite direction. So it's like they're undoing the effect of each other by having those arrows reversed and having the diagrams identical in every other way. Now the next shuffle, shuffle 47, might almost seem too simplistic to even include here in this series on Bessie shuffle diagrams. Um, but that's actually not really the case, as, a, as I'll show you. So this is called a packet reversal. And so it means what it sounds like it means, I believe. So if we begin with an ordered packet, 1 through 8, and you just reverse the order of the cards, what does it mean to reverse the order? What was on top will be on bottom, and what was on the bottom will be on the top. So one way to reverse the order is to just deal them to the table. Now they will be in the opposite order to which they were originally. And so we get a new ordering, of course, we get 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Writing this in Cauchy's two-line notation, we obtain the following. Top row is always 1 through 8, and then we just get 8, 7, 6, all the way down to 1. Converting this to cycle notation, we obtain the following. 1 goes to 8, so we have an arrow from 1 to 8, and then 8 goes to 1. So it cycles back around, giving us a, quote, two-cycle, also called a transposition. 2. Where does 2 go? 
2 gets sent to 7, so we have an arrow from 2 to 7, and then 7 gets sent back to 2, so we have a second 2 cycle. 3, 3 goes to 6, so we have an arrow from 3 to 6, and then 6 gets sent back to 3, completing that cycle, so we get a, another transposition or 2 cycle. 4 goes to 5, so we have an arrow from 4 to 5, and then 5 goes back to 4, completing a fourth 2 cycle, or a, in other words, a fourth transposition. Color coding the digits, we obtain the following. Recall that the color coding of our position values is as follows. Positions 1, 4, 6, 7 are color coded black. Position values 2, 3, 5, 8 are color coded red. This will enable us to detect what has happened with the Bessie sequence structure of the packet. And as a quick reminder here, if the Bessie sequence form is preserved, then this will occur, namely, whatever begins in positions 1, 4, 6, 7, after the shuffle is complete, will still be somewhere in positions 1, 4, 6, 7. And whatever began in positions 2, 3, 5, 8 will stay in those positions somewhere. Now they may be moved around within those positions, but they won't jump over into set A. Now that's different from the inversion, which is being represented here. The inversion occurs if cards originally in positions 1, 4, 6, 7 get moved to positions 2, 3, 5, 8 in some assignment, and vice versa. Cards that originally began in positions 2, 3, 5, 8 get moved to positions 1, 4, 6, 7 in some assignment. So we see here that black 1 goes to red 8, which cycles around to black 1. Red 2 goes to black 7, which goes back to red 2. Red 3 gets sent to black 6, which gets sent to red 3. And then black 4 gets sent to red 5, which gets sent back to black 4. So we see that the following has occurred. Each value gets sent to a value of the opposite color. And when that happens, inversion has occurred. So everything that began in positions 1, 4, 6, 7 get moved to positions 2, 3, 5, 8. And we can illustrate that using a Bessie sequence consisting of zeros and ones. So if we begin with this particular Bessie sequence here and reverse the order of the cards, we should get the inversion of that original Bessie sequence, which should be 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. And we do. The shuffle diagram for a packet reversal is as follows. It's on the bottom row, left-hand side. And what we see here is we have four transpositions. So we should expect to see double arrows between 1 and 8, 2 and 7, 3 and 6, and 4 and 5, which is what we see down below. Also, this right here indicates that inversion has occurred. Let me just point out something that I think I failed to mention. Going back to shuffle 45, because of this 6 cycle and that we have a 2 cycle here, this particular shuffle has order 6, which means you would need to perform this shuffle six times to return the packet to its original order, whereas shuffle 46 has order three. Performing this shuffle three times will reset the packet. And then the current one, shuffle 47, this has order two. Performing this just twice will reset the packet back to its original order. And if you think about it, that should be pretty obvious given what packet reversal does to a packet of cards. There is a mention down below that packet reversal is identical to shuffle 22 that we saw earlier in the series. So let's go ahead and take a look at shuffle 22 to remind you of that. In fact, doing this little review will enable us to talk about packet reversals in a larger context that is quite powerful.
So shuffle 22 was the pairwise transpose in which we stack from right to left. Okay, so why don't we go ahead and illustrate this. And so this gives you the exact same permutation. You can see that. We get four transpositions, one eight, two seven, three six, four five. And that's what we get down here with the packet reversal, one eight, two seven, three six, four five. And of course, the shuffle diagrams are identical. So let me just perform the pairwise transpose to remind you of how that works. So the pairwise transpose is where you deal one, two, you deal out two cards into each pile as you move from left to right, and you do one, two, one, two, one, two. Okay? Now, if we stack from right to left, that is simply a packet reversal. So let me just show you that that's the case. And then we'll kind of talk about a larger concept here for just a moment. So we should get eight through one. So the top card now is eight all the way down to one. So this is precisely a packet reversal. Okay, now this relates to a larger principle, which I call the first shall be last and the last shall be first. Okay, so how this works is if you begin with a ordered packet so that you can see what's going on, what this shuffle allows you to do, and the pairwise transpose is just a special case of it, this is where, if you've seen it before, you're allowed to deal out the cards into piles, and then when the spectator says stop, you deal into another pile, and then they say stop, and then you deal into the, another pile until you run out of cards. So here, let's say I'm dealing cards, and I say, tell me when to stop. And they say, stop right there. And then I start dealing again, again, and they say, stop, very good. And then I deal one, and maybe they even say, stop there, that's fine. And then I deal out the last two. Now, as long as you stack from right to left, all of this is equivalent to a packet reversal. That's all it is. So we will get that same eight through one, eight on top, all the way down to one in the bottom. Now to convince yourself of that, just perform that shuffle a few times and you'll see, oh, that's all it's doing. Because if you think about it, just follow, why don't we follow the cards face up? That's probably a good idea. Okay, so we'll have them face up just so we can see them. So if I begin dealing like right here, and the spectator says, stop. Okay, I stop there, and then maybe I deal here, and then they say stop, and then I just deal out one, and they say stop, and then I deal out the last two. Can you see that if we stack from right to left, we're going to recreate that packet, but it will be precisely in reverse order? Because if we stack this little packet on top of the six, now we have six, seven, eight. We take these three and stack them on top of those. Now we have four, five, six, seven, eight. And if we take all of these and stack them on top of the um, three, two, one, or the one, two, three, depending on how you want to read it, <laughs> like that, then you can see that what we'll have is we'll have, remember, we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now we have eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so it just reversed the order of the cards. So this shuffle that I call the first shall be last and the last shall be first is a really powerful shuffle. And the name justifies the actions. Because the idea is if I deal out, this is the first card dealt. The first shall be last, the last shall be first. Okay, what is the last card dealt? What's this one way over here? And the first one's down there. So the first shall be last, and the last shall be first. So you're just stacking from right to left. Okay, so that's all that shuffle means. And the name of the shuffle is meant to help justify the mechanics of the shuffle itself. Okay, so I thought I would relate that to something that you may have seen already on this channel. Our final shuffle for today, I refer to it as a non-example. 
So what do you think that means, a non-example? Well, everything that we've been showing you in this series are Bessie shuffles. Why are they Bessie shuffles? It's because they preserve or invert Bessie sequences. That's the definition of a Bessie shuffle. I thought it important that I point out that not every systematic shuffling procedure used for small packet sizes are necessarily Bessie shuffles. Many, many of them are, but not all of them. And so here's an example of one that's not quite a Bessie shuffle. It actually doesn't miss it by much, but technically it doesn't preserve or invert Bessie sequences. It's called the Australian under down. Now, if you remember the Australian down under, we've shown you before, and it is a Bessie sequence. That's where you have a packet of cards like this, and you put them down, and then the next one goes under, down, under, down, under, down, and so forth, until all the cards have been moved. Now, the Australian under down is almost the same, except instead of setting that first card down on the table, you place it under the other cards, and then the second card goes to the table. So let's go ahead and just illustrate the Australian under down. So we begin with our ordered packet, as always. And so this is where you go under, down, 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 last one goes on top. Now just to give a presentational insight, for the under down deal, it's often couched in terms of she loves me, and you put the card underneath, she loves me not for the next one, that goes down to the table. She loves me, that card goes under and you keep it, the next one, she loves me not, goes to the table. So you, you can use this she loves me, she loves me not narrative for, for the Australian under down. So let's take a look at the new ordering of the cards and see what goes wrong. So here is the new ordering. It's 15738642. So in Cauchy's two-line notation, we obtain the following. The top row is always 1 through 8. And now we get 15738642. Converting this to cycle notation, we obtain the following. One gets sent to one, so it's a fixed point. It's also called a one cycle. What about two? Two gets sent to five, so we have an arrow from two to five. Five goes to eight, so we have an arrow from five to eight. Eight goes back to two, so it cycles around, completing a three cycle, is what we call it. What about the value three? Three goes to seven, so we have an arrow from three to seven. 7 goes to 4, so we have an arrow from 7 to 4, and then 4 wraps around to 3, so that completes a second 3 cycle. And then we see that 6 goes to 6, so we have a second and final fixed point. It's also called a 1 cycle. Now, it's when we color code these that we discover that we have a problem. So let me just remind you of our color coding system. And the reason for it, of course, is so that we can see what the shuffle is doing to the structure of Bessie sequences of order eight. So recall, position values one, four, six, seven are color-coded black. Position values two, three, five, eight are color-coded red. Okay, so let's just see what happens here. So we see that black one goes to black one. That's fine. Uh, red two goes to five, which goes to red eight, which wraps around to red two. Now, so far, given just that much information, we're not in trouble. Um, it looks like if it's going to work out at all, it looks like this shuffle will preserve Bessie sequences, meaning the cards that originally began in positions one, four, six, seven stay somewhere within those positions. And cards that originally began in positions two, three, five, eight stay within those positions. So, so far we're fine. When we go on to the second three cycle that things fall apart. So let's take a look at this. 
we see that red three goes to black seven. Right there, that's a problem because right now for it to work, all of the black position values need to go to black position values and all of the red position values need to go to red position values. And if that happens, the Bessie sequence form has been preserved. Well, we have a problem here because we have a red position value, namely three, being sent to a black position value, namely seven, and then that black position value seven is being sent to four, and then once again, we have a black position value, namely four, being sent to a red position value. Okay, that's a problem. In fact, this just by itself is an indication that the shuffle that has a three cycle like this cannot be a Bessie shuffle because we either need the same color values being sent to themselves or the value of one color has to be sent to a value of the other opposite color, okay? And that's not happening right here. In fact, if we get rid of this entirely, if this is gone, then what's left is fine. It seems to be preserving things. It's the second three cycle that ruins it, okay? And now, why don't we illustrate that this in fact goes wrong with our quintessential Bessie sequence, one zero zero one zero one one zero. And then I note down here, Bessie sequences are neither preserved nor inverted by the Australian under down. Okay, so why don't we go ahead and just show you that our Bessie sequence structure is neither preserved nor inverted, it's actually destroyed. So here I'm beginning with 10010110. Let's go ahead and perform this under down. Maybe this time we'll use the she loves me, she loves me not narrative, okay? So she loves me, she loves me not. She loves me, she loves me not. Yes, no, yes, no. Yes, no, yes, no. Yes, no, yes, okay? What is the new sequence structure of our packet? Well, let's take a look. Oh, we haven't seen this before. Why is that? because it's not a Bessie sequence. This part right here is fine. You know, this could be part of one right here. So zero, one, one, zero, that's fine. And then we would need to have, for this to complete a Bessie sequence, we would need to have a one, zero, zero here and a one there. So if these two right here, if these two cards were to just switch places, it works just fine. That would actually now be a Bessie sequence if these two were to switch. So we're kind of just barely missing it by a single transposition of two cards. Two neighboring cards just need to be switched for this shuffle to preserve Bessie sequences. Uh, but since it doesn't, we can see that indeed our Bessie sequence structure has been destroyed. Okay, so that's why I call it a non-example. It's a sequence that doesn't quite work. Now what's interesting is in some ways it almost works. <laughs> it's not that far off. So let's take a look at the shuffle diagram for our non-example here, the Australian under down. So we have a three cycle 258. So we would expect to see an arrow from two to five, which we do and then an arrow from five to eight, and then an arrow from eight back to two. And that completes that three cycle. And notice that all of those vertices, two, five, eight, are color-coded red. So that's a little three cycle. Those three values also constitute an orbit. And in some ways, they're not harming the preservation of a Bessie sequence. It's when we get to the second three cycle, so we see that three goes to seven, which goes to four, which wraps around to three. So if we start at three, we should see an arrow from three, seven, but unfortunately it's red, three to black seven. And then we have an arrow from black seven to black four, and then an arrow from black four to red three, okay? So that is not going to preserve one, zero, zero, one, 
zero one one zero or its inversion zero one one zero one zero zero one both of those will be destroyed by this Australian under down. Okay, so let's go ahead and show you a final application for this series on Bessie shuffle diagrams. Now, the last application I gave you was quite advanced. Um, so I thought we would bring it down a few notches so that we don't lose uh, too many people. So let me just show you a, a really fun application. And what I thought we would do too is, since we're at the end of this series, uh, we can draw from any of the shuffles, any of the shuffles, except of course this non-example here, uh, any of the previous shuffles, one through 47, um, to mix the packet and then finish in the way that we would like to, okay? So what we need here is we just need, okay, and, and there's a lot of ways to kind of set this up. So uh, we need uh, four red and four black. So let me just kind of put out, uh, we need uh, four of each, Okay, that's good. Maybe I'll get a face card. That might be kind of fun to do. Another face card, I suppose. Okay, that's great. So we have uh, four red and four black. Okay, so let's just gather those up. Now you may have noted a special structure there. If you've been following the series, hopefully you did. Uh, but we're going to now do something kind of fun here. Uh, well, we can mix the packet first. Why don't we go ahead and mix it? We can use the ones today to mix it, I guess. So why don't we do a shuffle 45? Good review here. Shuffle 45. So we're doing a repeat LR. Okay, and then you move that over. Shuffle 45. Very good. And then shuffle 45. We're stacking the fourth pile on top of the second and the third on top of the first. And now we're going to stack the right pile on top of the left, okay? And then maybe we'll do shuffle uh, 47 next, I guess. This is just a, a packet reversal. That's the most direct way to uh, reverse an order of a packet. You could also use this first shall be last, last shall be first presentation of a packet reversal. Um, and then why don't we do, we'll do 46 next, okay? It's the only... That's the remaining one since we only have three new Bessie shuffles today. Okay, and then we'll do a left right on each of these. Very good, left right. And then shuffle 46 is uh, four gets stacked on top of two, three on top of one, but now we're stacking the left on top of the right, okay? Now I do want to point out that you could perform any of the 47 shuffles that we have taught you in this series to the packet right now. And you could have the spectator choose any of those in any quantity and in any order, okay? Um, but why don't we uh, take a break here. What we're going to do now, this is kind of like an intermediate little portion of the routine, is, uh, you know, given the mixing that we've done, I don't think anyone really, you know, could know exactly you know, where cards are right now, uh, especially since you as the spectator kind of chose the order in which we would perform these shuffles, okay? So what I need you to do is I'm gonna have you just randomly choose any of the eight cards and peek at its color, okay? So now, of course, you're not here, so I'll have to kind of play your part, unfortunately. Um, so maybe, maybe you choose this one right here, let's say. Okay, so you choose that one. And so what you would need, what the spectator would do is they'd pull it out and, in fact, they probably can show it to you or you have to be confident that they're going to be honest <laughs> in their actions. But anyway, what they're going to do is just pull out any one card like that and just make note of where it came from, okay? And they look at the color. So whatever the color is, they need to go into the deck and choose a color a card of the opposite color to this one, okay? So since this is black, they would just go to the deck over here and choose any card that's red whatsoever. It truly is their choice. Now, it probably would be best for them to not show you these cards, even though in the end, the way that we'll finish will be surprising whether you know the identity of this card or not, but it might heighten the surprise if you don't actually know what this is. 
Um, so they need to put a, a card of the opposite color in where we pulled one out and, and, and perhaps you don't even know what this is as the performer. That's fine. Okay. And now what we're going to do is just close that up and then we'll just continue mixing using our Bessie shuffles. Okay, so we could do an LR. Let's go back to the very, very beginning with maybe right on left. We could do a Mange over under. Do you remember that one? Uh, we could do an Australian down under. So down, under, down, under, down, under, down, under, down, under, down, under, down. Last one goes on top. Uh, what are some others? We have 47 of them. <laughs> uh, we have the Klondike Shuffle. That's a fun one. In fact, we have a whole bunch of Klondikes. Do you remember that? Where we can do uh, Klondike into four piles, which is really cool. And then we can stack from left to right or right to left, or even do a leapfrog. You can do this kind of leapfrog thing. How do you want? You want left on right? Okay, that's just fine. Uh, we could do a even up jog. Do you remember that? Where you pu push forward the even position cards and strip those out and then like randomly stack those, maybe right on left, that would be just fine. Maybe you'd like to do a mange under over this time. That's where you begin by putting it under. That would be great. And we can do one of these new ones as well, right? The repeat LR like that. And then we do again, left, right. Okay, this is one of the newer ones. Uh, but maybe we can stack it from left to right, right to left, leapfrog from left to right, or leapfrog from right to left. You want to leapfrog from left to right? Okay, this is where you leap over its neighbor, leap over its neighbor. How do you want those stacked? Right on left? Okay. So you can perform any of those 47 shuffles. You truly can. And then once the spectators convinced that nobody, nobody could possibly know the ordering of the cards, and the reality is these shuffles could actually be done with your back turned. The spectator can perform these shuffles, you know, as long as they know how to handle the cards without dropping them everywhere, right? So it could be that no one knows really anything about the ordering of the cards. That could be a genuinely, absolutely true statement. But nonetheless, I'm going to try to Discover the identity of your card in a very surprising way. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use my intuition. Now I will we'll pretend that I did not see the card that was pulled out or put in because I wouldn't have to. That could be hidden from me. Spectator can do that for themselves. So what I'm going to do is try to use my intuition to divide these cards into two kind of special piles. Right there, and then there, maybe there, and then there, okay? And what I'm hoping is these two piles are such that your card, the one that you switched out for this one over here, this one that you switched out, it will become just obvious that something's different about that card that you switched in in place of this one. Well, let's see if that's true. Oh, that's interesting. Hmm. <laughs> All of those are red. That's interesting. Oh, I would say one card sticks out like a sore thumb. To, wouldn't you? <laughs> These are all red. These are all black. Except for this one. These are all black. Is this the card that you sneaked in and put in that packet? And then we mixed it further? You know, the spectator, whether they say yes or no, it almost doesn't matter because you know it is. You know that this got switched out for this one, right? Because you started with four red and four black, but that by itself is not enough in information, right? Just knowing that there were four red, four black, it doesn't tell you which one they chose. But boy, did this special division of the cards make clear that one stands out from the crowd is different from the others. And it is indeed in this pile of black cards where there's one exception to that, namely a red A of diamonds. Okay, so uh, anyway, that's uh, there's probably a number of ways of 
creating a fun story around this technique. Uh, so anyway, let's go ahead and just show you how it's done. It's not hard to do. Um, okay. So, and, and I'm hoping that this one will be easier for people to kind of follow compared to some of the ones that we've done in the past. Okay. So uh, I began, if you noticed, you know, when I was putting out the cards, um, you know, I had the deck up and I said, okay, well, we just, you know, we need four, uh, red, four red and four black. Okay. And then I just started putting out cards and, and then I just did it in a way where, you know, I'm actually just building a Bessie sequence, right? Relative to color. So I have red, black, black, red, black, red, red, black. I suppose you could build this ahead of time and not even really show it to the spectator as to its, its organization. Though, even if they saw it, they wouldn't really think anything of that particular arrangement of the cards. It seems to be fairly random, actually. Uh, but I, I decided to do it right in front of you, and, and hopefully you noticed that, oh, I, I was building a Bessie sequence relative to card color, red or black. Okay, So if you close this up, at this point, since it's a Bessie sequence, any Bessie shuffle, 1 through 47, can be performed on this in any quantity and any order, and it will not undermine that we have a Bessie sequence. Now, it might invert it, right? It might invert it. What does inversion mean again? Well, that means the reds and black cards switch places in some way. So in particular, instead of having a leading red, I would have a leading black if the packet were to be inverted, right? But for what we're going to do, it wouldn't actually matter, okay? So you can mix this um, uh, before that selection of a card step, okay? So you can mix this and have the spectator feel confident that, boy, these cards are just beyond the knowledge of, of anybody, right? You know, we do four piles if you like. And then we can do, you know, leapfrog, I guess, if you want. That's one of our shuffles. From, it's RC shuffle. Okay. And then once you've mixed it, just to kind of allay any suspicions, especially if you just bring out the packet and you don't really show it to them, it'd be good to mix it before you go on to the selection stage. And then you just fan out the cards and give them the instructions. Um, and so you're placing a little bit of trust that they'll be honest, but have them randomly pull out a card. Maybe they pull out this one right here. Okay. And then just explain that um, whatever color that card is, um, go ahead and go in back into the deck over here. Go back into the deck and choose any card of the opposite color to that one and put it back in the same location from which this one was taken. Okay. And so they would look at this and go, okay, that's red. Well, he's asked me to choose any black card whatsoever. Any, any black card. These are all red. Lovely. Oh, there's a joker. <laughs> so any black card, there we go. And put it back where it was. Okay, that's fair enough. Okay. And now think about it. You know, even putting it back where it was before shouldn't really cause too much in the way of suspicions. And if it does, all suspicions will be eliminated by the time you now allow a free mixing of this packet using any one of many, many Bessie shuffles. Okay. And, you know, maybe you do, you can have them ask for the Klondike or, you know, that maybe they ask for the Klondike shuffle, or maybe they say, oh, we'll just deal it into four piles like that and you know just stack um, in you know opposite order to which you dealt if you would like um, you could even do do you remember that the Bessie one one so this is where you take one from the top one from the bottom top bottom top bottom top and then the last one goes on top that's the Bessie one one we also have the Bessie two two this is where you go one two from the top one two from the bottom one two from the top one, two from the bottom. That's a Bessie one, one or Bessie two, two. If you wanted to incorporate this packet reversal, you could use this idea of the first shall be last, the last shall be first. And this is actually quite powerful because you're giving them choices along the way. So you just tell them, I'm going to begin dealing the cards into piles. And as soon as you tell me to stop, I'll move on to the next pile. Okay. So you begin dealing and they say, stop. Okay. I'll stop there. Stop. Okay. I'll stop there. Stop. Okay. I'll stop there. Okay. 
And this shuffle is called the first shall be last and the last shall be first. So we just stack in opposite order, which helps to randomize the cards. Now, of course, that's a little fib, but they're very likely going to believe that. There's no reason for them not to. We could also do a feral in or a feral out. Do you remember those? This is where you just fan the cards and then you take the bottom half and then you just interlace them perfectly. Okay, like that. So and you can do a few of those if you like and, and interlace them differently if, if that's called for. And maybe we'll do a, a mange under over. So you push off the top card and go under, over, under, over, under, over, under. Okay. And why don't we finish with one of these repeat LRs. One more of those. In fact, we can do one of the ones we talked about today. So this is where you do, uh, you deal it out into left pile and right pile, and then do the same thing for each half. And then if we perform, let's say, uh, shuffle 46, we're going to stack, it's a kind of a leapfrog, we're going to stack four on two, three on one, and then we're going to stack left on right. Okay, so the point is you can perform <laughs> shuffles for a very long time where the spectator is freely deciding which ones and how many and what order. Okay, now if you haven't made a mistake in performing these shuffles, this will be, this will be a Bessie sequence. Okay, now it's going to be a kind of an interesting one because one card switched out for a card of the opposite color, okay? So what that will mean then is that card that was switched out, its color will be the opposite to the other ones that are in the special positions, one, four, six, seven, and the special positions, two, three, five, eight. So either they will have inserted a black among the three reds or a red among three blacks. That's guaranteed to have happened. And so if we just separate this in the way that we've been separating Bessie sequences into two piles where the cards in one pile come from positions one, four, six, seven, and the cards in the other pile come from positions two, three, five, eight, it's going to work for us that one pile of four cards will all be the same color. And then the other pile of four cards three of them will be the same color and one will be the opposite color and that will be the standout. That will be the, the one that stands out from the crowd. It should be obvious that, oh wait, that one's a little different. That's the one you actually inserted. Isn't it? isn't it amazing that the cards told us that, that the cards made clear that there's something different about the one that you happen to have replaced with the one that you randomly removed. Okay, and so, <clears throat> So to separate a Bessie sequence, there's a number of ways of doing it. You could use Warner Miller's triangle deal. You remember that? You clockwise and then re and then stack in counterclockwise order. Uh, the way I did it was I just pictured in my mind our quintessential Bessie sequence. This is the one I was picturing: one zero zero one zero one one zero. Okay. So if we, you think about the ones, I'm going to put the ones down on the left as I kind of separate these and I'm pretending to use my intuition. I'm, I'm getting some kind of promptings from the universe as to how to separate these to make clear what card the spectator actually traded with one of the cards in the packet of eight cards. Okay, so in my mind's eye, I may be focused on the ones being in the left pile and the zeros being on the right. So I'm just seeing this in my mind, one, zero, zero, one, zero, one, one, zero. So I just go one, zero, zero, one. So that's the first half. Now remember zeros over here, zero, one, one, zero. And if you rewind the video, you can see that I kind of pretend to struggle as to, okay, should this one go on the left or the right? Well, that's just all acting, probably bad acting, about, you know, trying to show that, okay, I'm, I'm, you know, maybe the signal and the, the message I'm getting from beyond is, is not 100% clear, but I'm trying to do the right thing. Uh, but anyway, if you separate it in this way, it's guaranteed to work for you. You're going to have a packet of three cards of one color with one of the opposite color, and then you're going to have a packet of 
four cards of the same color. And that's exactly what we have. We have four black, and then here, boy, does that king of clubs stand out <laughs> um, uh, as different. And, you know, and you can make a, a joke of it, but what's interesting about this is the cards themselves have brought to light the identity of the card that the spectator switched out for one of the original cards. That's the amazing, almost mystical quality of this particular routine. So you could actually feign ignorance that this is their card and say, wow, that's really interesting. Uh, these are all the same. There's kind of a, a sameness to those, but I, th I think the cards are trying to tell me something. In fact, they're almost yelling at me something about the identity of the card that you traded into the packet with one that you removed. I, I, I think it's trying to tell me that this is the card that you actually inserted in place of the one that you took out. Is that true? You know? And they'll smile at some point. And, and it really doesn't matter if they lie because guess what? You know that's the case. And so you can press the point and say, uh, I'm sorry, but I, I think you're fibbing here. <laughs> I'm getting a more and more of a confirmation from these cards that yes, indeed, they are telling me something and they are telling me that without a shadow of a doubt, this is the card that you substituted for the one that you remove from the original packet of eight cards. So anyway, that's a, so that's kind of a, a fun routine. And I also want to point out that once you understand even a handful of the principles taught on the Hidden Structures channel, just the number of combinations, the number of ways of utilizing these ideas is astronomical. And if you give it just a little bit of thought and let your mind kind of wander and just let your creativity kind of kick in, you can think of like this routine right here. I thought about it minutes, minutes, like two or three minutes before filming. I didn't have an application in mind. And then I thought, oh, I probably should think about <laughs> what, what would be good to present. And it didn't really take very long to think, oh, okay, yeah, 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 this would work. Let's do this switching out a red for a black and a black for a red and then it's going to come out in this obvious fashion that boy one of these is sticking out like a sore thumb you know um, so anyway the, the point I'm trying to make is even knowing a handful of the hundreds hundreds of principles I've taught on my channel you can come up with some amazing engaging mind-blowing mathematical card effects and as you learn more and more principles, the number of possible routines that can be constructed is almost countless. So anyway, it's a fun playground where you can not only explore ideas, but develop your creativity for designing original, engaging, and sometimes seemingly impossible routines. So that's I hope for you, you'll make use of the principles that you're learning because you're far more likely to remember them if you actually put them into practice and incorporate them in original ways that draw on your personality and your style and your background and your unique way of relating to others and your ability to pique the curiosity of your spectators to the point that they walk away is wondering how in the world is it possible to do what they have just now witnessed with their own eyes. So thank you for watching and I encourage you to take a look at other videos on the Hidden Structures channel. There's many many series on particular ideas and principles and there's many standalone effects and principles that are fun to master and incorporate and relate to other principles that you've already learned. And I think all of these principles are mind expanding and challenging, which I think makes them more rewarding because you come back a better designer of engaging effects and narratives. So thank you again for watching. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. 
it's a way of letting me know that you've enjoyed some of my content and would like me to continue creating more mathematical card presentations and tutorials in the future. So thank you again.